Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Maryville Fallowfield Pastoral Charge on the second Sunday in Advent. If you are looking for a pastoral charge that promotes God's radical love and inclusion, you have come to the right place. Our doors and our worship are open to everyone, so whoever you are and wherever you are in your journey of faith, we hope you will hear God speaking to you today. We are happy to announce that our churches are open for Sunday worship. This service this Sunday, December 5th and next Sunday, the 12th, is at Fallowfield United Church at 10 a.m. The service on the 19th will be at Maryville United Church at 10 a.m. The Christmas Eve service will be at Maryville at 7 p.m. on the 24th. At this time, we would like to thank everyone who make it possible for us to continue to offer our online services. There are so many people at work behind the scenes and we are grateful to them. You can find more information about our services on our website. As a caring pastoral charge, we do our best to help the many organizations in our city that need donations, especially now that the cold weather is setting in. The Elizabeth Fry Society, Center 507, the Ottawa Mission are just a few that need your generosity during these difficult times. You can find a list of these community services and more on our website. And if you would like to donate to the church, you can do so online by e-transfer to muchurch at belnet.ca. Or you can send a check to either Maryville or Fallowfield Church. You can find each address on our website, maryvillefallowfield.org. Lastly, if you would like to meet with Reverend Sandra in person, please drop her a line at sandra48 at belnet.ca. Or call the church and leave a message at 613 2250248. These are all the announcements for this time, and so once again, welcome, and we hope you enjoy this time of worship.
Peace doesn't always mean being quiet. On the second Sunday of Advent, we seek to be a people of peace, living from a place of justice, joining our voices with others who want to give birth to a new way of being. Peace calls out to us so that we may help it become a reality. God is our peace, and so may we let God reconcile in places of conflict, creating bridges where divisions have grown, sowing all of creation into a new tapestry. May peace be found in a manger and throughout the world. We come into your holy worship, O God, hoping for a glimpse of your presence. Silence us when we allow our voices to drown out yours. Silence us when our words and our actions do not line up. And into that silence, speak again your word of life and your call to live the gospel. And help us now to be still and to know that you are our God. Amen.
Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious God, by your grace, we are surrounded by those who have traveled this Advent journey of faith before us. Shepherds, wise men, prophets and psalmists, disciples and evangelists, martyrs and saints, they have all walked this sacred journey before us. Today on this second Sunday in Advent, we thank you for their example. And we are in awe of the mystery of how you come to us through other people, people who lived so long ago. We are grateful for their lives that challenge our own lives and our own faith. And they challenge us to live with respect for each other and for all of creation. One who challenges us to live an authentic life of faith is John the Baptist. And John was and is the voice calling out in the wilderness, asking us if we are ready to actively respond to the teachings of Jesus. Oh God, we are grateful that John encourages us to keep our faith tradition alive so that others may have the hope and the peace that passes all understanding. May we listen to all who guide and uplift us and encourage us to live out the teachings of Jesus. And let us now say yes to this call of John by offering up to you the prayer Jesus taught his early followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. scripture this morning is from Malachi chapter 3 verses 1 to 4 the coming messenger see I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight indeed he is coming says the Lord of hosts but who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. 
Herein is wisdom. Amen. The Gospel this morning is from Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. In the fifteenth year of the reign of the Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was the ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Etruria and Trachytitis, and Lysanus, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into the region all around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Herein is good news. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love, O God. Amen. Traditionally, the second Sunday of Advent is dedicated to a remembrance and reflection upon the ministry and the message of John the Baptist. And this year, not only is the second Sunday dedicated to him, but next week as well. And I think that's a, a good thing because John, whether we like his character or not, is vital to the Jesus story. And you know, I think he gets a bad rap because people down through the years have focused on his outer appearance as opposed to the compassionate, liberating message that he had for the people of his time. And crowds were drawn to this charismatic man just like they were drawn to Jesus. And John, John spoke as one with authority as if he were repeating what God was saying to him right at that very moment. When I think of John, I can hear the echoing of the words of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah says, If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart as it were a burning fire shut up in my bones, 
and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. John is passionate about the ministry of Jesus, and he cannot hold that message in, even knowing it will cost him his life. Now, to get the seriousness of John's message, we need to know where we are in the holy drama. And, you know, we want so badly to have a rosy picture of the Bethlehem story. We want to rush to the manger, sanitizing our story along the way. We want to skip over the nitty-gritty details and go right to Mary in her pretty, pretty blue robe, not even a wrinkle on it, kneeling in a clean manger. But that's not reality. But Bethlehem was a poor, common, ordinary place. A gritty little town with mud baked and stone houses that you continually had to sweep to keep clean. And people in the town of Bethlehem, well, they eked out a meager living under a brutal Roman dictatorship. And the author of Luke emphasizes that when he points out that the people were under the rule of the emperor Tiberius. Tiberius, the self-proclaimed divine ruler of the empire, he was able to send his armies at a moment's notice to squash any dissent. In Luke's time, he was extending Rome's power, and there was no way to get away from his reach. Luke says the people were also under the rule of Pontius Pilate, governor of Judea, and his role was to sentence any dissenter to death. And of course, Herod, ruler of Galilee. And we know that the Herod family were conjoined to the Roman power, brutal to any opposition, murdering their own family even to keep the throne, and willing to behead the opposition for the entertainment of the court. The people were also surrounded by Herod's brother Philip, and the ruler of Abilene. And there's Annas and Caiaphas, high priests from the ruling classes who had a stake in keeping the peace with the oppressor, and they were willing to sell out any voice, any voice that gave hope to those who were at the margins. The author of Luke's Gospel sets the stage for the danger inherent in John's message, making sure we understand the scattered through the tiny villages were Roman garrisons set up to keep the peace, to ward off any kind of insurrection. Not the greatest time for the message of Jesus and John. You know, it was a tough life for the people. And John comes along with his liberating message for them. Barbara Brown Taylor says he was the messenger. And the message lit him up like a bonfire in the wilderness. But John didn't stay in the wilderness. He took his message into all the region around Jordan. He took his message into the streets, into the gritty towns. John was as much of a threat to the Roman Empire as Jesus was. The weary crowds were drawn to him because he offered them hope. John's message bypassed the temple and all its rights. His message was countercultural and he called out the oppressive rulers of the day. His message was for a people who were filled with hope, but also weariness, filled with possibilities, but also with challenges, who had moments of joy, but also pain and sadness, and certainly anxiety. John calls to the people. He calls out for them to wake up and watch so that they would not miss the new thing that God was doing right before their eyes. John called to the people, and he calls to us now to go to Bethlehem, even though Bethlehem will not make everything perfect. John called to the people, and he calls to us now to go to Bethlehem, because it is our authentic place where we meet God and Jesus. It is there at Bethlehem that we can help to learn how to build the kingdom come on earth. Bethlehem is the place where we can help to make the crooked places straight and where we can see the salvation of God. You know, Luke understands the darkness of life, yet his desire was not to lead his listeners into despair, 
but to announce to them that there is not a barrier in place that could keep the word of God from coming. Luke wants us to know that God's power is greater than any cultural structure on earth. Any structure that divides humanity and keeps us from experiencing each other as neighbors and that keeps us from experiencing God in our midst. God's love is pressing us forward now into a new future and there is no power on earth that can keep the light of God from shining on our path. May God bless the faith and the passion of John the Baptist to our hearts. Amen. Please join me for our closing prayer. O oh God, our hearts yearn for your peace in the world, the peace that passes all understanding. And as we leave our worship today, may the words of John the Baptist echo in our hearts. And his words call us to prepare our Advent hearts for the coming of Jesus. John calls us to join the multitude of disciples who have traveled this way before us. And they all call to us to live out your covenant of peace with our neighbor. We hear the voices of the prophets speak to us. We hear Amos and Ruth and Isaiah, Judith, Micah, Esther, and Jeremiah, all calling us to live as you created us to be. And that is to live and be people of love and compassion. Today on this second Sunday in Advent, we give you thanks for speaking to us through the prophets and the disciples, and we give you thanks for your love shown to us in Jesus, the Prince of Peace. We are grateful for his way of radical inclusion that encourages all people to live with respect for all of creation. Be with us today, O oh God, as we answer your call to justice and peace. And let us use this justice and peace to help others in our community and in our world. Today we give thanks for family and friends. And we remember those who cannot be with us during this special time of Advent services. As we continue this sacred journey, may we never forget that you are with us, for you are our rock and our redeemer. And hear us now, O oh God, as we offer to you in a moment of silence our own gratitude 
and our own concerns. May we with the psalmist say, Lead me, O God, in your righteousness, and make your way straight before me, for you are a shield around me. Amen. Now as we make our journeys toward Bethlehem, may the star be our guide, and let us then in turn bear witness to others that they too can journey with us toward new hope and peace. And now may the child of the manger be with you all as you go in peace and in hope. Amen.